All right, so you make sure you're in the right class. You all are. Web Development Technology, it's also known as AWD 1000. No one's asked yet, but just so you know, I do give regular breaks. I mean, if it's going to be a day where I'm going to do a lot of lecturing, I won't typically, typically lecture for more than 50 or 55 minutes. Then I'll give you a 10 minute break. All right. I mean, uh, I, I always remember Mr. Hagee, who was my seventh grade teacher. He always said this, and I think it's a good thing to say to the class. If you're ever sick, don't come up and ask for permission to, you know, walk outside or go to the bathroom. Just go. He always tells this story how you just bought a brand new camel colored suit and somebody came out to tell them they were sick and they barfed all over it. All right. Nah, we don't need that. Okay. We do start at 805. You've heard this shtick. So just so you know. So the two people who are not here today, regardless of reason, all right, are absent today. All right. And why is that a big thing? I had one of my students last semester last semester he was is starting his second of four classes he said oh no they told me classes didn't start till wednesday nobody told them that i know they didn't but he missed monday and he missed tuesday so he already had two days you know that he'd missed in other words he'd already used up a third of his attempt you know of, of his absences okay all right there are a total of 80 sessions i will tell you too people ask she i was surprised shannon didn't mention it there are no classes a week from today. It's Labor Day, so there are no classes. Are you not expected to come? If you do look on the attendance thing, it'll already say it says canceled on there. The other thing too is they have a very strong military presence at this at this college. So um, I think it's Monday. It's November 11th. That's Veterans Day. They close for that time. That's called a school holiday. When it's a school holiday, you are not expected to attend. All right. Uh, people have asked me this in the past. Well, um, can I still get into the campus? Probably. But these rooms are locked. So unless you can find somebody else here, you won't be able to get into any rooms. All right. All right. We are in this room for this class and the one that follows in spring. That's my information. I already told you that. If you don't know, and again, you probably already do, but if you don't, right when you go out the door, if you make the first right, that's the men's and women's room. All right, if you go down to the second right, that's where our offices are. All right, and Ms. Bruggeman, who just spoke, hers is right after ours is. She just got promoted. She, I don't know what her title was, but she's now dean of like academic affairs or something. That's why she literally, in one week, she may hit all three campuses. She was always in the past, it was, it was usually, she'd be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, she'd be at St. Louis Tuesday and Thursday. Now this semester with what they've changed, I don't know what her schedule is. All right. And as you can probably hear too, she loves to laugh. Her laugh just kills me. All right. So when you look at the program level student outcomes, I'm not going to read these to you other than to say this one right here, the first one, is the one that this class is about. All right. That's what this one's about. All right. And we will also, we won't probably get into it today because it's already 10, but starting tomorrow, you'll already start to learn about version control. All right. And if you know what it is already, great. And if you don't, I'm expecting you don't. I do Pardon? I don't. Okay. I don't. And that's, that's fine. You, you will already starting tomorrow. This is the book we're going to use again for the first half of the class, of the first seven to eight weeks. Then there's another one that looks almost just like it, except the title's different. It says Mirox JavaScript and jQuery. I'd start bringing this one tomorrow. All right. Um, people always ask, well, can you find that like for free online? Mirox really makes it hard to do that. Yes. I have the ebook. Okay? Yeah, yeah. If you, if you did buy an ebook, that's not a problem at all. And I'll be going from the equivalent of an ebook. I've got oh. something called vital source that they give to instructors so that's what you'll be seeing on the board all right now if you say well i ordered and it didn't come in yet let me know all right and i'll try to get you the first chapter or two okay all right again i don't want to read this to you this is a class about website design more than anything else this is what we're going to be covering we do cover a few other things but more than anything else that's what it is all right. In fact, when you look here at the, these are the, the outcomes for this course. 
So w when it's about the last week of the semester, somewhere in the last week or two, Ms. Bruggeman is going to come in here. She's going to open up this, the, the wall between these two rooms opens up. She'll open up the wall and she'll stand right in between here. You will do an evaluation of me. All right. Did I do what kind of job I was supposed to do? But one of the ways I'm supposed to be measured is did you learn this stuff? And if you go, I don't know what any of that is, you aren't supposed to. All right. We're literally going to build a, uh, a, a, a website using Bootstrap. And I'm going to suppose that you know nothing about it because I'm going to tell you what to type in. And then I'm going to encourage you to change this and change this and change, so you can see the differences. After we do that and people say they understand it, then I'll ask you to create something similar to that as a client, you know, yourselves, rather. All right? Okay. The policies, I, we don't need to talk anymore about the handbook. Does everybody understand the attendance? Again, since we meet five times a week, that means you get six maximum absences. Okay? No one was absent this morning. No one was tardy this morning. All right? I have a question. Yeah. If we're tardy, what's the difference between like, having a tardy and an absence? The difference is you get two tardies or one absence. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah, that, that is the difference. The other thing, too, is I, I will tell you, Mr. Corrigan next door, he's one of the nicest people I've ever worked for. He's one of the hardest working people I've ever known in my life. But if you want to, for lack of better words, piss him off, all right? Just stand out there. Start standing there at like 10-2 instead of 5-2. He hates that. He'll walk by, and then first he'll ask me, why are your students you know, getting ready five or ten minutes before the end of the class? We had a guy who did that. And I talked to him two or three times about it. He stopped, all right? So it wasn't a big thing. The other thing, you know, when you were asking, like, about, about your nose, but I don't know what that's called, stud or whatever it is, there will be people who walk around who look for that stuff. I don't. I mean, your, your, your shoes, are, they look more like tennis shoes. Yeah. Now, they're nice-looking shoes. They're better-looking shoes than what I've got on, but that's not my rule. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this, this week they'll be pretty lenient about it, but I will tell you, for instance, let's just say you didn't shave this morning, all right? And somebody probably mentioned it to you. If you came in tomorrow and you still hadn't shaved, then you get basically the official warning. Came in here Wednesday and you hadn't shaved, they'd probably write you up, all right? That's how strict they are here. But again, what's that? Yeah. But what they're saying is it's like with me. My wife works on this and she's sick. That's why, otherwise, you would have seen this. Uh, mine would have looked very much different. It probably will tomorrow if she's better today. I don't know if she is or not. All right? What? That she doesn't? Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a cheap SOB. That's the main thing that goes to being rational behind that. All right. Now, this is where it gets a little funky, just so you know. We have two types of tests in here. You're going to take two tests by the end of this week. And if you say, well, it's... I don't even know how. We're going to take the first one as a class. I guarantee if you put down what I tell you to put down, you'll all get 100. All right? And then you'll, you'll take another one the next day, that, which will be similar to it. All right? Now, hold on. There are certain times in the class where... Start that up again. Uh, so talking about, again, about grade scale. The other thing that Ms. Bruggeman mentioned this morning, all right, is let's let's just assume you know you, you all take the first test you're all doing great now one of you for whatever reason has a bad week or a bad couple of weeks and you do poor on a couple tests and now i see your grades starting to slide i'm supposed to fill out one of those referral forms to mr markowitz he'll come in here and he'll talk to you <clears throat> he is he is very unassuming he is very easy to talk to i mean if there's something that's going on that you don't want me to know you want him to know he is sworn to secrecy. That's his job. He will also work with people from St. Louis if he cannot help you, but he feels there's someone there who can. All right. This is a workload table, and basically the way I set my classes up, I may have even said this to you when you were in last week, is when you look at it, basically we're here for four hours a day. I mean, it's three hours and 50 minutes. Let's just say it's four hours. Four hours, five days a week, 20 hours. All right. 20 hours a week, 16 weeks, 320 hours. I try to set my classes up so 160 of those 320 hours are lab. That's when you have time to work on things. 
I don't tape those sessions, all right? But that's your time, okay? I also have two students, two of my second year students who have volunteered to tutor. So if that becomes an, an issue, we can get two tutors in here. And they're both really excellent students. students. So Lauren and Luke, all right, so, all right. There is, you know, you know about Inside Rankin, you already asked about that. If you have any general college questions, you go to Patrick or you can go to Brandon. I just put Patrick down in here, all right? If you didn't hear about this already, you really should go out to Inside Rankin and make sure that you sign up for that emergency notification system. I've had students do that before. I've had students who've said to me, uh, I'm coming here from 40 minutes away and I didn't realize class was canceled. And I'll say, did you sign up for the emergency notification system? No. Then there's really nothing I can do about it. We have to do it. Instructors, we have to do it every year. All right? Where is that? Uh, that's a good question. Notifications. I think it's under notifications. There you go. Notification sign up right there. I think that's it. All right, and what's going to happen if you didn't hear that is at least at the beginning of September and probably at least at the beginning of October, you're going to get a message. Literally, you get a text, and it's a practice message. All right, now just I'll take your question, but just so you know, they they again they had another lockdown at the St. Louis campus a couple weeks ago. That's the main reason they have this. It's not so much for this campus. This campus, it's for weather alerts. We've never had any other kind of problem here. Question. Uh, I was trying to get into the notification on my uh, phone, or I'm just trying to figure out like, what the password would be. What should happen is you should have to use a regular laptop to get into it. Once you sign up, it'll then come to your phone. Either you have to leave it an, an, uh, an email and or a, uh, a phone number. I think you have to leave both, and they, they typically send both of them to you. Yeah, but let me, let me into try and log in. Okay. But it wasn't, like, letting me. All right. And look at this. Unless told otherwise, assume classes are going to be held. All right. Last year was a very unique situation for me. Just so you know, you may care, you may not care. Before I taught here, I taught in the Wisconsin Technical College system, and I taught there for about 25 years. I only had four, four sick days in all that 25 years. I've been here, it was three years on July 5th. Now, last spring, I had blood clots in my lungs. Wasn't expected, all right, but I was hospitalized for the first time in my life for three days. You don't want to have that happen to you either. They literally, they took blood from me about 100 times in three days. All right? Yeah. So unless something like that that's unforeseen happens, I'll be here. When I was gone that week, they brought in uh, a, a person who instructs at the St. Louis campus, and they taught all week. So we did have coverage. All right. I don't want to go through the whole syllabus. It's ridiculous to go through 80 days. But we did the class introduction. We did the student handbook. Work ethic, all right. Again, I think I even talked to you about that last week. If you show up, if you're on time, if you do the work, that's a meets expectations. If you go over and above, so if I see you, you're here a little early, you know, etc. Don't worry about staying late because there's another class that comes in here. They start at 12.05. You'll start to hear them at about quarter two, all right? And they don't want you to stay. They don't want you to stay late, all right? That's why when it is 11.55, if you want to take off, take off, all right? So talk to you a little bit in a few seconds about what that's about, because that's a lot of the class, all right? For tomorrow, make sure you read chapter one and make sure you read chapter two, all right? I'm going to go over a little bit about chapter one right now. But if you notice this, I, what I want to show you is the end of the week. See this? Especially with a small group, I'm hoping at least this works really well. We're going to create, start creating a website 
Okay, we're going to start creating it on Friday. Just to show it to you, that's my granddaughter. So you'll see, if you see her, Olivia. Uh, this is what I plan on having us create on Friday. Now, it's not going to look like much. But again, you don't have a lot of experience, right? So we're going to do this. Not only are we going to do this, and again, I, I realize there's not much in it, but it's going to give me a chance to show you a lot of stuff, such as Jeff. Well, oh, where is it? come on. This site is what's called responsive. You see how it changed when I made it smaller? You're going to learn how to do that already this week. You won't be tested on it, not until we go over it in the book. And it's like chapter 6 in the book. Well, why not teach you the right way to do things right away? All right, so that's what I'm going to do. And then once we get done with that, now this, this is a, a, an in progress, so I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, complaining about it, but we're going to, and I'm not, I'm not from Missouri. So you're like, well, geez, what the hell are you doing all this blue stuff for? Well, because I just did it. This was when I created this stuff. It was right after they won the cup. All right. So we're going to create this, and you'll see this. All right. Then we'll create this, and you say, "Well, what is that?" Well, notice how it changes. All right. So you'll learn how to do that. Uh, this was just a page because I was screwing around one day, but I'll explain that to you when we get to that point, and you'll learn how to create forms. All right. Now, again, a lot of the stuff that we work on, when we're working on it, you'd be like, well, that's okay, but it's not all that cool. No. But when you take your tests, your tests will be very much resemble what we do in class. All right? So let me do this. Again, this is something I've got that you don't have that's called vital source. If I could give it to you, I would. They don't allow me to give this to you. So let's see. than it did. All this stuff, I should have checked it over the weekend, checked it about two weeks ago. Every, this, this is not at all what this looked like. I was logged in. For the bookshelf, you don't have to. For regular vital source, you have to. What they do is after your books are, are a year or more older, they automatically move them from to this bookshelf, which I hate. The other way is so much easier to use. And I said to the woman, well, how do I check? How do I change that? You can't. So. Yeah. And again, if you, if, if you, Either tell them Ms. Bruggeman will get it, or you have them just send it here. I mean, you can have them send it to your house. Yeah, that's the other thing. You can get the ebook. Every yeah, and everybody's different. I I understand because I've got both. You know. Yeah, if it asks you, you might want to put in AWD 1000. Okay. Okay. 
has the link to the book. Or you can go to the book. I think the link that I put on the syllabus is to Amazon. No, it's to a different site. Then, then somehow it mag magically changed, which is cool with me. Yeah, there's two of them for the class. There's this one, Murox HTML and CSS 3 4th edition, and there's Murox JavaScript and jQuery 3rd edition. Just so you're aware of this, because there's some stuff I have to move around. I'm going to start doing it hopefully tonight. But I'm making available to you, you will have all of the PowerPoint slides that go with this book, all of the exercises that are in this book, etc. You'll have all that stuff. Hopefully by tomorrow. All right? If not by tomorrow, by the end of the week for sure. All right? The other thing, and I told you guys this before, but I'm showing it to you again on the off chance. You didn't hear it. I know you were all there that day. But if you do go out to YouTube.com, and you come in here and you put in my name Rankin Technical College all right then in here I have amongst other things so if you click on the link here you can go to all my different playlists and I've got a playlist I've got several of them all right you can see my my uh, my this is no I don't have the boo boo song on here all right so you can see that's the problem when you have a two-year-old who knows how to use your phone. She's constantly putting stuff on my YouTube channel. No, the Boo Boo song is not on my YouTube channel. All right, but you're going to see that there eventually, you know, occasionally, because I have to put it there and get rid of it, etc. All right, but on my playlist, notice I've got, uh, let's see, I'm already doing the, the 2021, but if you look, if I go to here, to all playlists, there is a playlist here two of them for this class right now all right there is don't worry about the gym stuff we may or may not end up doing that but there is one let's see and I can I'll be more than happy to send you the links for these all right you're doing C sharp this spring coming up all right then in fall next year You'll be combining the two classes. You'll be using C Sharp along with ASP.NET, and we're going to create database-driven websites. And then in spring of the last semester, it's Android. Okay. Yeah. Right. I was wondering about that because I didn't see the C Sharp on the first semester. Yeah, you will, though. All right. So let's... I. When people decide they're going to sell their own books, who's to say how much you know they should charge? It's the same kind of way if you go out to Amazon. They'll oftentimes people will have yeah. All right, so this is like I said. When you look here, this in and I will grab both of these URLs and send them to you just so that everybody does have them. But right here, there's 27 videos. These are all the powerpoints for the entire book. Some of them, there's 20 chapters in the book, 27 videos, so some of them are more than one video. All right? I tried to keep these down. You notice that the longest one is probably about 30 minutes. All right? There's also going to be another one that's in here for the JavaScript and jQuery. Okay? Now that's from last year, so that's why there's 81 videos there. But, well, again, we'll find all of these. All right? I will show you where all of them are, etc. What I'd like to do, though, is to go right now, go over Chapter 1. Okay. After we go over Chapter 1, if we don't finish it by 11 o'clock, we'll take a break at 11. Promise. All right, we'll take 10 minutes. Then we'll finish it up. I will run off copies for all of you of the, the test review sheet that I talked to you about before. All right. So the first eight chapters in the book are section one, all right? Section, or chapter one in here, for lack of better words, to many people, is kind of a blow-off chapter. 
it's an introduction to web development. I don't like to sit there and, and say, well, let me read this to you. You know, Shannon's terrific. She really is. But she does a lot of reading of what she put on the board. I don't, I don't feel the need to do that. All right, so this is what we're going to cover in here. How web applications work, intro to the stuff. Remember, this is an introduction. So they're going to show you a lot of stuff in here. In this book, in this book, they recommend that you use brackets as your editor. Feel free to do that. I'm going to recommend that you don't use that. I'm going to recommend that you use an editor, it's free, that's called Visual Studio Code. All right, there's reasons, that, and we'll get into that tomorrow, that I recommend that you do that. All right. Now, the way these books work, and again, if you haven't seen the book before, then it may be new to you, I guess. But, for instance, if I go over here to Chapter 1, they typically have all writing on the left page, and on the right, they give kind of either examples or code or a summary of what was on the left. All right? That's the way Muroc books work. Okay? We use the Muroc books in here. We're going to, in spring, we're going to use their Muroc C Sharp book. In fall, they're supposed to have an ASP.NET book out. No one's seen it yet, so I have no idea if we're going to use that or not. And we currently use their book for Android. So you kind of get used to the way that they write things and the way that they do things. All right. So this chapter, again, is an introduction to web development. What I'm going to spend a lot of time doing is going over the page that's on the right. All right. Now, the funny thing is, if you look up on the screen here, in the last version of this book that you that that was available, all right, not the version that we're using right now, not the fourth edition, but really in edition one and two and I think three, they didn't even have the word tablet there. They didn't even have the word smartphone there. All it said was desktop, desktop, desktop. All right. But now, if you haven't heard. It happened about a year and a half ago. More people now use the internet, reference the internet using tablets and smartphones than they do using desktops. All right. It's 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 funny. They used to have a lot. My wife is into the, the QVC and HSN stuff. They used to have a lot of stuff when they had their electronics where they sold a lot of, of desktops. They don't have very many at all anymore. All right. There are a lot of places that will even tell you that the laptop is dying. I don't think that's the case because as long as you have people who don't have great eyesight, you know, until they make a tablet that's this big, and once you do that, it's not really a tablet anymore. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, a couple terms, just so you hear these. The machines in this room are all wired together. They all are. This is a local area network that's in here. Local meaning they're all together. Now, on the other hand, the machines here can talk with the machines at St. Louis, but they're not physically wired. That wouldn't make a heck of a lot of sense to run cable under I-70, etc. So that's a wide area network. All right. So if there is a physical connection or if they're in the same geographic space, basically, it's a local area network. Otherwise, it's a wide area network. You know, they give you a picture in here, and they say that's the Internet. It's a series of LANs and WANs. I mean, there, you can go and you can, you can go into Google pic, you know, uh, Google Images and put in the Internet and find pictures. And that's just somebody's interpretation of what it looks like. So. All right. When we start in here... You're going to end up for the first website, the first real website that we create, it'll have three pages on it. All right. The home page, which is almost always called index.html, will have a contact page that'll be called contact.html, and we'll have an about page that'll be called about.html. When you've got a site that has all pages that end with .html, they're static. That means they're very, they don't change very often. In order to change them, you've got to take the site offline, make changes, and load the site back up again. 
you're going to learn how to do that this semester. You're going to actually put stuff out there, and I'm going to show you two or three different ways of doing it. All right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, like, I went to a private school growing up, and, like, we used to do that through the notepad on HTML. Like, we would make an HTML, like, with the brackets and, like, open that through that way. No. You know what I'm talking about? Well, it's, like, I... very, very, <clears throat> very, very, very basic. Like, you type in the codes for the colors. Like, we would make yeah. forms and just, like, you would take a notepad and then you would save it as a, some, like, save it as a link. Yes. Yeah, the there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We're not doing anything that like that. Grade, no, I'm not doing class. anything like that. All right. And I maybe have even shown you this. I don't know again if I have or not, but as an example, uh, well, okay. This is what students did last year. All right. This is my friend Tom. That's the guy I visited out in Nashville. All right. He's got his own pet sitting service. And the students basically came in and wrote websites. They could do it almost any way they wanted. He picked the one he liked the most. All right. So that's nothing. You know, that literally, if there's a domain out there. If you go out to leadmeathome.com, you can see that site. And the site was made by Luke, who will be one of the um, tutors. Z. So that's more the stuff that you're going to do. All right. You're going to learn in here HTML. I'll never probably ever call it hypertext markup language, which is what it is. The key thing, though, is look at this. See that word right there? It's not programming. You're going to learn how to create websites using HTML, but HTML itself is not programming. Why? Because programming supposes you can do looping, you can you can do what it's what's called selection. You know, if this do this, otherwise do this. You don't have that in here. All right. You're going to learn a lot in here about this whole process. So this doesn't matter right here if it's a laptop, a desktop, your phone, anything. You go in and you type something into the address bar, you hit enter. So in other words, I come in here right now, you've all seen this kind of thing, but I come in here right now and I type in rankin.edu. Okay, boom, I hit enter. Okay, magically, Rankin's page comes up. But what actually happened there? I hit enter. The system sent what was called a hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP request that was answered by one of Rankin's servers. It figured out what you needed. If it had to, it might have even called another server, but it figured out what you needed, and it sent it back as an HTTP response. That's what using web pages is all about. It's using what's called the hypertext transfer protocol to ask for stuff and get it back. In a nutshell, that's what it is. You know, wasn't there more than it? Yes, because sometimes rather than HTTP, you have FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol, which we'll talk about at another time. But have you ever noticed, uh, you know, maybe you do this, maybe you don't, I don't know. But for instance, going out to Rankin, see how it says rankin.edu? If I save that and I bring it up here, see the difference? It's Hypertext Transfer Protocol with a secure link in it. That's what the S stands for. All right? And they've, they've, you know, usually when you do this, you have to do something like, and what does the WWW stand for? World Wide Web. All right. Sometimes you have to put it in. Sometimes you don't. All right. If you noticed before when I did my friend Tom's site, I just put in leadmeathome.com. The system found it. I didn't have to put in HTTP colon slash slash www.leadmeathome.com, but I could have. What we're going to end up doing very quickly is we're going to bring JavaScript into the equation here. What that does is it allows your site to be interactive. Now, I'm, I'm not asking, but I'm going to tell you my feeling that 
Shannon that was ridiculous when she had that thing that was going, you know, when you had to text. But you're going to learn how to do stuff like that. Not that you'd want to do, not that you'd want to do that. But what you'll learn when we when we combine HTML with CSS, which are cascading style sheets, are how to do transitions. So how to bring something. You've seen that where something fades into view or fades out of view. You'll learn how to do that kind of stuff. All right. So a dynamic web page is basically one that doesn't end with .html. All right? It ends with .aspx or .jsp or .php, etc. We'll get into all that stuff. And as mentioned, typically there's there could be several servers involved in giving you what you want. So when you went out Maya, when you went out to uh, and, and if you just go out to, to Rankin.edu, you really are getting their homepage. But once you went out and you, you wanted to order your book, that was more not that, that that's not a static page, that's a dynamic page. Does that make sense? All right. I probably said this to you last week. I'm gonna recommend if you don't have Chrome on your machine, load it. All right. Now, I know with, with, uh, with Apple machines, I know they have Safari by default. That probably would work just fine. I would not... I think Safari doesn't really work. Like for the ranking website, and okay. inside ranking, Safari didn't work. Like, I had to download Chrome. Okay. I would recommend that everybody has Chrome. If you go, well, I don't like Chrome, then I would take Firefox. If you didn't want Firefox, I would take Edge. If you didn't want Edge, i take Safari. Oh, Microsoft. I know it's Microsoft, but it's not... IE. You know, Edge is Microsoft, but it's kind of an improved, it's improved Internet Explorer, for lack of better words. It. Yeah. It's not much better. Yeah. It's better. But any you know, anything was better than what they had. Yeah. All right. It's not like, it's not like insanely yeah. no problem. So in here, as far as this program that you're in right now, you'll learn C sharp, you'll learn ASP.net, you'll learn Java. And that's it from this list that's in here. Sometimes people say, well, why aren't we doing Python? Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? Every time you add a class, you have to remove a class. And what happened was, you know, when Mr. Corrigan two or three years ago met with people in business and industry, they said, these are the languages we want you to teach. If we bring in our advisory committee, we meet once a year or twice a year. When we bring them in, if they all said, hey, we're all going to Python, I guarantee you within a year or two we go to Python here. All right. What do you think is the best uh, language to use? It depends on what you're like using like it a, for. Uh, like a, like a, more of like a, I don't even say database site, but like a um, dynamic site. Well, what, what's happening more and more today with people are creating websites okay. is, yeah, they're, they're using JavaScript for it. Everything. Good. Yes, you can. It used to be JavaScript was only on the client. Now, it, 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 if you've ever heard of like Node.js, React, Redo, etc., a lot of those. That's that's JavaScript on the server. That's what it is. There's talk within two years we may change our ASP.NET class to a Node.js class. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. So what? Why? Why JavaScript? Again. More than anything else, this, this means interactivity. That's what it is. You can interact with things. All right, so that's what, we're here, what we care about. I am on page 15. If you look up on the screen here, I didn't make this blue. All right, just so you know. It was made blue. But by the time you finish with this class, you'll understand virtually what everything in there means. All right? And could I go over it with you right now? Sure, I could. But it, I don't think it would make much sense to do that with you right now. All right, that's that's all HTML. When we get done with that, we're going to go into this. That's CSS. That says that anytime you have an H1 tag in your HTML, have no margin, have one quarter of an M of padding, have the font size double what it normally is, and make it navy. A lot of this you'll read and you'll go, well, that just makes sense. 
HTML does make sense. CSS does make sense. JavaScript is the hardest to learn out of all of them because it is programming. But, but believe me, we're, we're going to write a ton of code. All right? And for, for a lot of it, I'm not going to give you an assignment until we've done something like it as a class. All right? That's not fair to you. Now, I'm going to give you this. It's 1044. I want to finish before it clicks to 1046. All right. Years ago, there was HTML. So you know. And it was HTML 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.1. Then people said, I don't like HTML. Some, some of these governing bodies said this. We need something better. So they made this language called XML. But it was too hard. So in order for people to be able to go from HTML to XML, they made XHTML. Then the very people who said that, X, that, that HTML wasn't good enough said, Let's bring HTML back. That's kind of what happened. So fi with 5.0 and 5.1, that's the newest version. So you're going to learn. You're going to learn the newest, the latest, and greatest HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So they brought. Uh, so we used HTML for like what seven years? Oh no! It was. It came out first around in the early 80s. Oh. Okay. I, no, it doesn't matter. It was, but but see the thing is, when the internet first happened, if you never heard of this, the idea behind the internet was it was going to allow the government to talk to educational institutions. That's what it was for. No one else was going to use it. Oh yeah, I do. I didn't know. Yeah, but that's not kind of pretty much over time. It's not how it worked. I mean, if 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 the internet was owned by somebody. It would be the kind of thing that if you had a chance to get on the ground floor, you wouldn't be teaching at a technical college. You'd be living someplace where it's warm, all right, and, and, and enjoying the rest of your life, you know? All right, so they talk about brackets in here. What we're going to use, what, I, what I'm going to recommend that you use is Visual Studio Code. We're going to look at that tomorrow, I promise. That's where, probably how we're going to start, all right? There's other things that you can use. I've got a daughter who's 28 and doesn't know what she wants to do when she grows up, all right? And she tells me now her latest is she wants to be a graphic designer, all right? And I actually think she could be very good at it. She hates website design, though. She had to take two website designs. She got through them because Dad helped her a lot, all right? But she loves stuff like using any Adobe product. I love the Adobe product. With Adobe products, for example, like with Dreamweaver, much easier to create websites. It's much more drag and drop. I'm going to show you by the end of the semester some drag and drop type of stuff. We'll create a website, and we'll probably spend an hour or two working on it. Then we'll go back and we'll recreate it in five minutes using drag and drop. All right. We're going to be using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code which is kind of a cross between an editor and what's called an IDE. Next semester, we'll be using Visual Studio, period. That's an IDE. All right, it does a lot, of, it automates a lot of jobs for you. All right, we are going to use FileZilla. Guess what? You all, right now, every one of you, I didn't email you with your password, but you're all going to be able to go out and hopefully at least by the end of the week, because we're going to do it because we want to try it, make sure it works. You'll be able to go out, in fact, let's see, um, iwt.rankin.edu slash m-m-a-i-e-r. Wow. You've already got space out on the Rankin server. So do you, so do you, so do the other two people. So does James, who moved to another state, because I didn't remove him yet. All right? But why, why should you care? Well, as an example, this is what you're going to be creating. Okay? Now, one of my students, this is Brady. This is when he started. So that's the first, first year. That was the web, the electronic portfolio he created. It's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. 
Okay, then when he finished, this is what he did. All right, so you can see the difference in quality. Okay, and the reason that this stuff is important is today, these are what employers are looking for. So you will, yeah, you'll still have a resume, but on the resume, you have a link to this. You will put this out on the, on the Rankin site. So anyone with an internet connection will be able to use it. Are there other places you can put it? Yeah, we're just going to start talking about that tomorrow. All right, but you all will have that. All right. We will use FileZilla to use this. What does that mean? That means if I come down here, this is something you'll have to download, but don't worry about doing it now. We'll get into FileZilla. Your screen is going to look down here like it's split in two. All right, if I lift this up a little higher. And this is your machine. You'll log in, and once you log in, this will be your stuff on the Rankin server. All you have to do to, to go and put something out there, all I did was on, on the desktop, I had a file that I moved now, I guess, but it was called index.html, and I took it, grabbed it from here, dragged it over there, let it go. That's all you got to do. That's how easy it is to put stuff out on that Rankin server. All right, I'll have you take a whole and create a whole folder that'll be called portfolio. You'll drag that whole thing out there, boom. It's there then. Now anybody can get to it. So they explained to you a little bit about what FileZilla is. We're going to use another package that's in here. We'll use FileZilla. But I want to show you, I want us to be able to get stuff out there on the system as fast as possible. So I'm going to show you another way to do it. All right. How to view a web page. Okay. You'll have to start to understand this stuff. I already mentioned to you, HTTP is the hypertext transfer protocol. So the whole protocol is the HTTP, HTTP colon slash slash. That's the whole thing. Then there's the domain name. So for instance, we had HTTPS colon slash slash Rankin.edu. So we didn't have a path or a file name. So it brought up the index.html from Rankin's site. Okay. All right. Did you, I, you, again, you probably have never done this unless you, you know, you've had some interest in this stuff in the past. But for instance, if I go out to CNN.com, not CNN.ecom, CNN.com. All right. And I want to say here, okay, I want to say what makes up this web page. I can right mouse click on the web page and choose, where are we, view page source. And this, don't worry that you can't read it, that's all the stuff that's on this page. And I'm going to even show you how you can grab your own copy of it. And let's say that, you know, you look at it and you're like, oh, I'm not, a, I, don't, I don't really wish this wasn't Trump, I wish it was somebody else. Maybe you wish it was you. All right. So you'll be able to change that, put your own name in there, and even if you knew what you were doing, your own picture, it'll only be on your copy of it, but you could do that if you wanted to. All right. So that's that view, view page source that I just mentioned to you. All right. Now, kind of interesting, we, we actually don't have that much to go. We should finish this by 11. But it says five critical web development issues. Each one of you in here is going to create your own, your own website. You will all do that. All right. I'm, I'm looking at right now, I think we're going to do one as a class. And, and then I'll have you do one on your own. What's it going to be about? Something you have an interest in. Okay. Now, you heard, you heard Ms. Bruggeman today. This is no joke, so don't laugh when I say because I'm not trying to be funny. It's not going to be a site on pornography. Well, gee, Mr. Scott, you said do it on something we like. I like pornography. No. But let's say that, you know, you got a, a, a certain team you like or a certain whatever that you like. All right. So... When you start to create a website, things you got to think about. Number one, users and usability. Okay? Now, why does that matter? If you're making a site for little kids, it won't have a lot of text on it. 
It'll have a lot of bright, splashy colors, because that's what little kids like to see. If that same site is going to be used by retirement people, you know, people who are retired, they don't want to see splashy graphics. They want to see a lot of text. There are some sites that will even, you know, ask your age or ask whatever, and they'll give you different versions of the site based on questions that you answer. All right? People, as it says, people want to get into a site, get in and get out as quick as they can. By and large, that's what they want. They want to get the information as quickly and easily as possible. Yeah. How do they use the page? You know, most people could have come out to a website. It's not like a newspaper anymore. Okay? Just to show you, again, you may care, you may not. But just as an example, I'm, I'm from Milwaukee, so I still get the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and I get it online. All right? My mom gets, gets uh, you know, because she likes the hard copy, so she still gets the regular paper. It's easier for her to go through it, but I can jump. I just want to go to the sports, and I want to find out, okay, there you go. I can just jump in, get right where I want to go, get in, get out. All right? But even more so, I mean, if I'm going to go out, if I'm going to sit there and do this, most people, if I go out to Amazon, I know what I want. If I know I want to see how much Amazon's charging for the book for this class, I'm going to go over to books, and I'm going to type here Murox, I don't know, HTML and CSS 3, 4th edition. I spell Murox wrong. But notice, there it is. So in other words, if I know that I'm going to order it myself, I'm going to click here. I'm going to double check. Yeah, that's the one I want. So I'm going to say put it in the cart, period. All right? And that's what they're saying here. That's what most people want to do. They want to get in. They want to get out. If there's going to be a hyperlink there, it should make sense. You should never have a hyperlink that says, click me. Well, because well, some people will click it anyway. But to do what? You know, if, if you're going to set up a hyperlink that says, click here to go to the Rankin Technical College website, you shouldn't have the word here be the word that's underlined. It should be Rankin Technical College website. It should just make sense to people who are looking at it. That's all. All right. Four guidelines. You may or may not have heard about this. Imagine that's a newspaper. Okay, and let's say that this is the way the newspaper looks. Everybody with me? All right, that's above the fold. So the important stuff should be higher up on the page, not lower. All right. Some people don't even realize that you can scroll, that you can scroll rather. I watch people on their phones, and I'm like, you know, you can scroll. Really? There's more there? Yeah, you're scary. But uh, the other thing too is, if you know, you always want to make sure if you are going to scroll, scroll up and down. Never scroll from left to right on a website. Period. All right? Because people just don't realize that they can go to the right and get more information. They just never see it. All right. So above the fold, group related items together, include some kind of a header or something that identifies it. Use current conventions. All right. Did you see this? Did you did you notice? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But when I came here, see that? A lot of places today don't even have this. They just have that. All right, but most people can look at that and know what that means. All right, but not everybody, so they put them both in there. There's nothing wrong with that. Usability: How easy is the website to use? Anybody, you know, anybody ever see the show on TV that's called Bull? Okay, it's on Monday nights. I watch it. I don't know why, but I started watching it. And I kind of like it. The guy's a trial psychologist. In other words. He helps attorneys, and he helps them pick the right, the right type of um, jury. And they even have mock juries and stuff. The reason I'm telling you that is many companies, before they take a site and make it live, they'll bring in people from the general public. There are people who have jobs testing websites before they go live. All right, why? To make sure that they're easy to use. Are they usable? Because if they're not, then people aren't going to use them, and somebody spent a lot of money 
for for a bad reason, you know. No, they also have to have like really like a lot of appeal and all of them need to happen. But I mean, not just okay. Else. I like how you have to click through the next page and scroll through. Oh, on here, that's one of the things that that's different from from this and the the other one. You had your choice. Here, you don't. If I if I want to, I have to. I can also manually go in there and change that. Mm -hmm. All right, Chrome. I'm not going to say anything more about it. Okay, you've you've heard what I said already. The other thing that's important that people don't realize today is web accessibility. You know, approximately 10% of people in the world are colorblind. Okay, why is that important? Because if you make your background look too close to the color of your text, they can't read it. All right. I don't know what the pers I don't know what's that? Yeah, that's my problem with her. Um, with her black and her red, or black. Yeah, and red. I don't know why she had those things in red on there, but yeah. she did. I couldn't read them. They were tied on mine. All of our ones. Oh, okay, okay. She should have made the blue ones title four, then she would have had more people answer a question right. All right, but with web accessibility, all right. The thing is today, you know, if 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 I've got a site and I'm providing a service, not to be funny. If, if you're blind and you're willing to subscribe to my service, your money's as good as somebody who's not blind, correct? Yeah. So web accessibility is for people who are, we don't call them impaired anymore, we call them challenged. Sight challenged, hearing challenged, whatever. Okay? I think on, uh, on this book it says, like, we have up there a read aloud feature. Yeah. Right I, had, uh, I had a woman... Who um, was in a class with me? This was a good dozen years ago when I was teaching in Wisconsin, and she was totally blind. She brought her dog with her every day. Dog laid underneath the desk, but she had a, pro a, a thing called Jaws. So, like, if she was going to type the end, you'd hear D H E space E N D. Drove the class nuts. She was. She was also. That's what we tried to get her. Believe me, she couldn't. She had problems with her ears too. And it had to be turned up loud because she was older and had problems with her ears. So the class was going nuts. All right. But the point is there was absolutely nothing wrong with her doing it. It was her right. She had every bit as much right to be there as anybody else. We, we made accommodations as the semester went on. So search engine optimization. If I'm going to go and create Jeff Sporting Goods, I want what I'd like to have happen is when I go into Google and I type in Sporting Goods, I'd like Jeff's to come up before Dick's. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so search engine optimization says I want to set it up so that search engines, and let's face it, we're talking Google. Google's got about 90% of the market, and the other 10% is Bing and Yahoo. <laughs> All right. But you want and, and they don't tell how they how they actually do their search engine optimization, but we'll look at some of that stuff as we go on. Ask them, so if you, if you like, uh, ask them, yeah, there's all right, we're going to learn responsive design in here. In other words, your site should look nice regardless of the device it's being shown on. And that's it for the chapter. So it's 11.02. Let's come back at 11.15, and I'm going to give each one of you a handout so you can see what's going to be on the first test. All right? Are you going to stay in here? Yes.